Good morning, friends. We'll begin our daily devotional in just a moment. Good morning and welcome to our daily devotional from Pilgrim Congregational Church. I'm Patrick Horn and this week we are beginning a new passage of scripture. Um, I will not be preaching this Sunday at Pilgrim Church. Uh, John Olson will be preaching and so um, the passage that we're looking at this week is one that, um, that I will not be preaching on. And I believe John Olson has chosen a different passage. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, but I think he has. Hi, John's there. Uh, I'll be reading 1 John 5, 1 through 6. And we'll be continuing our discussion of uh, the concept of love in the epistle of 1 John. So this is 1 John 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. I liked how yesterday, during the children's message and even before reading um, the passage from 1 John, Susan Shedd mentioned that it was like a tongue twister. And I think that's right. I think these uh, writings, as they're translated in the English, uh, seem like tongue twisters, the way they sort of circle around the same topic. And it can be a bit uh, dizzying for, for sure. Um, but the topic in 1 John is still very clear, and that is that love comes from God, and that uh, if we love God, then we will love people. So, <clears throat> in uh, the first, very first verse, um, the elder emphasizes that everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. Now, the use of the word Christ here, as we know in the Greek, is the translation of the Hebrew Messiah. That is, it's the word that's used for Messiah. However, by this time, um, the word Christ has become so associated with Jesus that some of the more explicit references to the Jewish Messiah uh, don't seem to be present, although certainly all of that Jewish tradition lies in the background. And when it emphasizes here, uh, again, is a repeating of, of, of John chapter 4, that a follower of Christ, that is someone, someone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, um, is someone who loves both God and the children of God. The, uh, in verse 1, it says, everyone who loves the parent loves the child, uh, which is just simply another way of saying everyone who loves uh, God loves the children of God. And then verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. And um, that is, again, that... Uh, the two are interchangeable, that loving God is the same as loving people, loving the children of God. And uh, it, it sort of keeps going in this circular pattern in verse 3. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, uh, and his commandments are not burdensome. 
And so um, we simply follow what God has commanded us to do, which uh, in here commandments would be very closely connected to um, the two uh, major points made in the Gospels by Jesus, that the commandments could be summed up as uh, loving God and loving your neighbor. And so uh, these are, this is his commandments, and these are not burdensome. And also that this loving of God in this way conquers the world. Now, of course, when we use the word conquer, we uh, rightly, I think, uh, think of uh, military conquest. We think of um, dominating and controlling. But what's interesting is in the latter part of that verse, it says uh, what, what indicates a victory that has conquered the world is our faith. There, it's interesting. There's no, there's no other indicator of victory other than our faith. And our faith is um, that we love God and love people. So the so here in 1 John, conquering the world clearly doesn't have any connotations at all of uh, a military control or force. Uh, it, it's winning uh, by faith, that, that that is the victory. The victory is that we live in faith, and living in faith means loving others. And then, of course, again in verse 5, uh, closely tying that to uh, belief that Jesus is the Son of God. And then this, in verse 6 of the lectionary, 1 through 6, uh, there's this reference to Jesus Christ um, who came by water and blood, not only but, but, but with water and the blood. And that seems to be a reference to the fact that Jesus is both uh, flesh and spirit that Jesus, uh, this is sort of the beginnings of the development of the idea that came a little bit later of this um, argument about just how divine Jesus was. And, um, and here we see, I think, the, the roots of that. So again, the elder is interested in impressing upon the reader how closely connected faith in Christ, being a follower of Christ, is to loving God, and how loving God is essentially the same thing as loving the children of God and, and obeying God's commandments. And um, so this heavy emphasis again on the centrality of love. Let us close with this prayer from W.E. Orchard. Our God, tempest-tossed and worn with war and fighting, we turn to thee in deepest need. Without all is tumult and confusion, within ourselves weariness and deep dispeace. The storm has left us tired with watching, the strife has found out every weakness, and we long to be at rest. We want rest, yet not the rest of those who sit with idle hands, not the rest of those who cease from mental strife, not the rest of those whose ambitions leave them disillusioned or content. We want that inward rest of soul which comes to those who share the easy yoke of Christ. We need forgiveness. Nothing else can meet our case. The struggle has not left us unscarred. Our souls are disfigured and stained, and sin has enfeebled our will. Yet no easy word of pardon, Lord, or promise of forgetfulness, not merely the hiding of thine eyes or a garment to cover our shame, nothing but the transformation of our being, the cleansing of the heart by blood, the weaving of a robe of righteousness from repentance and renewed desire. We need a refuge for the tempest still is high and the enemy is close at our heels, yet not a refuge from life, from truth, from thee. We want to face life with strength for all realities. We want to find our refuge only in the truth. We want to hide ourselves deep within thy heart. Amen.
Thank you for joining me this morning from Pilgrim Congregational Church. I'm Patrick Horn, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.